All right. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a propane jet burner like this one here. Uh, so this guy here is a piece of a galvanized pipe. You can use just a piece of steel pipe. I just happened my piece is galvanized. Uh, I welded the end close on this side. Be sure to strip off the galvanization before you do that if you are using galvanization, galvanized pipe. Anyways, I welded this end shut. And then on this end here, I have a threaded end. You can normally buy a piece of pipe with the end already threaded. It's really a really cheap pipe, very common. This is a, I believe this is three quarter inch. Um, yeah, I believe it's three quarter inch. Um, or, alternatively, you can just buy it It'll look like this. Just this is a shorter one, just buy a longer one. And what you'll do is just buy a cap to cap the end of it. Instead of what I've done here, it just happened that I already had some spare parts and instead of just, you know, going out and buying something new, I just welded this up. But you can just buy this piece already and it'll save you some time. Okay, so the burner itself, uh, this is the, the burn tube, or sorry, this is not the burn tube, this is the body where the orifice uh, jet hole will be drilled. Uh, I'm going to have two legs for it, kind of like this, so that way I can mount it onto my deep fry station. And I'm going to have a, a tube, a jet tube on the top here, and I'll show you that later. But the first things first, gotta, I, now I have this piece of pipe, I'm going to drill a hole for the orifice. To drill the hole, what I do is I filed, let's get this in focus here, I filed this flat just around the pipe here, wherever you want to drill your hole along the, the pipe, wherever you want your burner to, to be centered up. And what I'm doing is I have my drill bit in the, in the chuck, I'm putting a little cutting oil because these are such small drill bits, and I'm going to drill. Nice even, go slow. I just wanted to mention real quick, um, using really small drill bits to drill the holes for the orifice, um, sometimes it's not always possible to, your chuck in your drill press or your drill might not be able to handle such a small drill bit. So um, mine I'm lucky that I am able to, but if you can't, you can take some metal tape, this stuff here and just wrap it around the drill bit to build it up so that it can grab a hold in the chuck and that works just fine. Just go, take your time, go slow. So that's just a little tip that uh, I found work for me when I'm using it in my uh, drill that doesn't have a chuck that can grab onto a drill bit so tiny. There we go. It's a nice hole there. So now I'm going to work my way up until I find I'm going to try test the burning until I find the proper uh, orifice size. So this hole for the orifice right now, I start off as a 132nd, and I'm going to work my way up. Uh, I know that approximately 1.3 millimeters is probably the sweet spot because I've made a few of these burners, but I just want to experiment and see how how they operate uh, all the way up through different sizes. So, so the pipe that I'm going to be using for the burner tube. I should mention is three inches in diameter and it is schedule 40 pipe which designates the it works out what the thickness will be for the wall so I find this works quite well so as you can see here it's about three inches in diameter or maybe just under 
and then the dia inside diameter. I forget exactly what it what it is, but it's like two and a half or so. Um, so anyways, that kind of gives you an idea of what I'm using for the burner tube. It doesn't have to be exactly this type of pipe, but something with a thick wall is nice. Next we need to plumb it. So I just have to happen to have uh, an elbow, but you can just do a straight uh, coupler to this. I have a quick connect to this with a reducer bushing going from uh, whatever this is, three quarter inch or half, sorry, three quarter down to, I think this footing here is a quarter. And this just screws on like that. I need to put some uh, pipe dope or thread, uh, pipe thread tape on that Teflon tape. Uh, but I'm gonna do that next. And then we'll test, we'll test burn this uh, all the way up through for all of the different uh, orifice sizes until I find the one I like. Might not show all of that, but uh, and then I'll uh, I'll finalize the construction by welding on the tube and the and the feet and the legs. Okay, so the way I test how I figured out the size of the orifice hole. Here's the orifice hole here. I have two pieces of angle on either side just so I could temporarily support this. Someone's running a compressor inside. Um, temporarily support the burn tube. I put tape on the bottom of the burn tube just to restrict the amount of airflow so that I could can get a control of the flame at lower parts of the of the uh, of the bandwidth of the flame. Um, so right now, I, I've tested to the point where I think I have a pretty good uh, flame size. So now I'm gonna light it. So I've gone up through the drill bit sizes. I went from a 1 32nd drill bit up to a 0.9 millimeter, a 1 millimeter. Alrighty, so in the end I ended up with 1.2 millimeters for the ideal orifice hole. I did some testing on my 1.3. 1.2 seemed to look just a little bit better. I already have a burner with 1.3. So this one here is 1.2, so I'll just show you. So I get okay. It's a little yellow, but it's never going to be really that small anyway, the flame. Typically I'm going to be more out about that for when I'm doing kind of a simmer. So I'm quite happy with that, so that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, so that was pretty successful. I'm very happy with that. Next, I'm going to weld up some legs on this, um, and that's about it. The burner will be done. Drill some holes for mounting, and that's as about as easy it gets to make one of these jet burners. So I have the burner tube welded up now. The burner tube, the Schedule 40, weld it to the tube that I drilled the orifice hole in. Uh, the way I lined it up was I ran propane into it, lit it, moved it until it was perfectly centered, disconnected the propane, and tack welded this in place. And then next I'm going to weld the feet in place, which is just going to be some angle iron. I have to figure, I have to figure out the distance that I want for that, which is going to be dictated by the fryer station over here. Um, as you can see here, I have a previous tri-burner set up over here, which is really powerful. But so I'm just building the single burner to step it down. So I'm going to take that off, measure it, see what I need. Your needs might be a little bit different, but for me, uh, I just need to do that to uh, measure and do that before I can weld the feet in place.
All right, so the burner is complete. I welded on some angle iron here, some angle steel, one inch angle steel, so that it mounts in the deep fry station that I'm working on, right like that. Got to tap some holes for it, so it'll, it'll bolt in there nicely. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I need to paint it now, so I got some high heat barbecue paint here. I'm going to paint it up to keep it from rusting because I grind it off a lot of the galvanization before I weld it. You don't want to weld galvanized steel because it produces zinc fumes, which isn't good for you. Um, yeah, so the things to watch out for really while building a burner like this is to make sure the orifice hole and the ratio air to fuel ratio for the propane to air for it to mix in the tube needs to be proper or else propane won't burn. It has a narrow, very narrow range where propane will actually burn unlike certain gases like acetylene. So there's not much to it. You just need to keep that in mind. If you follow kind of what I set out and said earlier about how to size the orifice hole, um, it should work for you. Um, I'm going to remove this so I can paint it. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind is for all of your fittings, I have a quick coupler here. Uh, be sure to use Teflon tape on it or PTFE tape. Uh, I use this stuff here which is gas rated. So you can focus in on that. All this is just gas rated tape. I got it at Home Depot. So just remember to use that. Don't use the white stuff. That's not the stuff to use. All right, I'll paint it, and then I'll take a few final photos of it and uh, put it into operation. So one other thing I forgot to mention before I paint it is I have to put a choke on the back of this tube so that I can restrict the airflow so I can get um, the flame to burn at a lower, at a lower uh, I guess, rate so I can have a smaller f uh, flame. And I... Through trial and error, I used some painter's tape when I was building it, and I determined that I have to cover roughly a quarter on each side, and it works just fine. So I'm going to just use some metal tape. This is just some aluminum tape that can withstand a little bit of heat, but the bottom of the burner doesn't get that hot anyway, um, so it's not really a big deal. Um, I, like I said, I was using painter's tape, and it wasn't burning up, so it worked just fine. So I just went approximately a quarter and it worked just fine. I'm just going to cut off the ends here. That will do it. One choke. Now I'm going to apply some pipe thread tape, gas rated tape. And always remember to wrap it in the direction of the way the threads of the of the fitting will go so I made sure so it wrapped going clockwise so the end of the tape wrapped over like that so when I twist this on the tape won't become unraveled because if I twist it the other way it would become unraveled so now I'm just going to put my fitting on So to control it, to control the flame size, I use the ball valve on my coupler here, the quick coupler. But you could pipe in an inline ball valve as well. So now I'm just going to light it.
So that's pretty successful. I'm quite pleased with that. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install an electric start from a barbecue. So I'm just going to pick up a universal electric start and I'll install that. Okay, so the last thing I've done is I've hooked up an electric start to the burner. And I just got a universal electric start and it's one that's powered by a battery. You can kind of hear it there. And all it is is it's got a power module here with a button and a battery. So it, it uh, increases the voltage. There's two leads that come off. So two leads come off this power module. I put one to the ground, which is the base of the actual burner. And then there's, there's the electrode down there where the arc will be. And so this piece here, I drilled a hole and I mounted it. So you can kind of see it there. And the other lead attaches to it there. And then I tapped a hole for a bolt right here. And you can see that bolt down there now. And between the two, when I hit the striker, it'll hit the button, it'll arc. So you can see it there. And that's enough to light the propane. And that's all that there is to the electric start. Nice and simple, really easy to hook up. Uh, the module is pretty cheap. It's just a universal one. I think it was like 20 bucks. Uh, I'll hook it up here and I'll show you how it works.